Revolutionary talk for revolutionary times. Promoting peace, liberty, and prosperity around the clock. LibertyTalk.fm. Welcome to Living in the Solution with Dr. Elena George. Today we have a return guest, someone we haven't spoken with for a while, but I think what he has to say is very timely. We're going to speak with Mr. J.D. Tuchile. He's a former managing editor of Reason.com and current contributing editor. Having started his online career in the days of proprietary online services and seen them swept away by the internet, he's a believer in liberating and transformative power of new media. He's worked for ZDNet, the New York Daily News, and Forgotten.coms and .orgs for years. He's edited the late lamented Freedom News Daily for the equally born freemarket.net. His provocative and often witty columns on topics including civil liberties and government overreach have appeared in publications including the Arizona Republic, the Denver Post, and Washington Times. As a result, he's been quoted and criticized in the pages of such publications as the New York Times and Salon. He's also the author of the comic adventure novel High Desert Barbecue, which reviewers have kindly described as fun, a very polished novel and filled with likable characters, tons of humor, and nice sprinkling of libertarianism throughout. He's an enthusiastic explorer of the American Southwest deserts, mountains, and forests, and he lives in rural Arizona with his wife and their son and their two dogs. So, Mr. Tuchelli, I wanted to thank you so much for joining me again today because we had a conversation offline, and I think convenience seems to be the buzzword. If it's new and it's going to make your life easier. You don't, you don't even have to think. It's just going to think for you. Then it's a good thing. And I really think that's a cautionary um, statement with if it's new and newfangled, you should just jump in with both feet. I want to pick your brain and speak about what you think are some of the things that people need to be wary of. Just because it's new doesn't make it good, does it? No, I mean, we want things to be easier, to be um, convenient for us. Um, I mean, I, I make this, I have an 18 year old son and I point out to him that when I had to research a paper back in the day, I had to go to a physical place, a library, I had to go through the card catalog and then pull old magazines and journals and books out of the stacks. He just does searches on the internet. That convenience is great. But there are trade-offs in everything they, that we do. Sometimes those trade-offs are worthwhile. I have a cardiac pacemaker. It speaks to a base station. It creeps me out. But I've had my cardiologist call me and say, you know what? Our, your pacemaker is telling us stuff that is a little disturbing. We've got to address that. And then I ended up having a procedure that made my health better. But sometimes the trade-offs are not worthwhile. Uh, when you, we use social media, we use our smartphones, we give away sometimes way too much information about our lives, we give away our location, and we do it in return for quick pleasure, a little convenience in minor matters. Um, we trade away a huge amount of our life in return for things that may not actually be worth that trade. And it's something about which we need to be much more careful than most of us have been. I think you're right. I mean, the smartphone, and I remember when I was in college, even having to go to the, the library and do index cards for my citations and make sure they were in the, you know, in the, the body of the work that I was doing. I don't think people even do that anymore. But the phones, I mean, we think about we're just living this life where it's all about convenience. And in order to download the app, you have to give up your data. And I'm going to give you an example. I have a polar monitor for a heart monitor. I haven't used it for years. I decided to pick it up and try to use it again. And it realized it changed their, their access information. I had to give serious data about myself in order to even down, or I should say, turn on the polar monitor. And I said, I don't need this anymore because forget that. And it was very personal stuff. And it was going to go into a database and you couldn't opt out. And that's the difference. Have you noticed that before you could opt out of the things and you could still download them? Is that a creeping, you know, um, intrusion in our proof, in our privacy? It is. And I think it was based upon uh, changes in public perception. In the past, if you'd ask somebody, if you said, here's a cool toy. 